team. So he's going to come up and actually talk to you guys about why past customer marketing works, kind of share a little bit about what works for him, and give you guys some insights into that. So let's hear from Mr. Mike Dowid. What's up, everybody? Cool. You guys, you guys want to learn some goods? All right. I was just uh, thinking of another uh, set. Uh, it's not a part of my talk, but you know that companion set that Graves was teaching y'all how to close on? How about uh, adding a four-pack of steak knives and, uh, and making the transition to the ultimate upgrade even easier? Who's going who's gonna to take that challenge on? So I just did some numbers. 807 retail, you bonus three steak knives, 562. There you go. That's a little nugget. I just want to teach sales, and they put me on marketing talks. So. <laughs> All right, so go to this sheet here. I know many of you know that I've really made marketing kind of my passion because it's something I really enjoy doing, but a lot of you have really never learned how to do it, invested into it. Maybe you have challenges. Maybe you just think you, know, you don't know what to do. So let's kind of create a grade for yourself and um, use that as a foundation to... Uh, to to see where you're at with this talk. So if you have your packet, it should say five questions to ask yourself when it comes to marketing. And don't overthink it, just uh, put down a number that comes to mind. So do they remember you when they use Cutco? So when you sell someone Cutco, do they actually just think of Cutco knives or do they think of you and your name and your brand, your image, your family, Baby Lincoln, whatever you promote at the booth? One to 10, one would be a um, you're just, uh, you're just the person who gives them a receipt or number 10 is they literally want to meet your family and they know you, they love you. And, uh, so give yourself a grade there. Do they know how to reach or find you when they need cut, go or service? So when someone needs a broken tip fix, they need a sharpening, they need a gift. Do they know to get in touch with you and how to do that? Or are they calling Cutco? They're going, I don't know who my rep is. They're going to the store, the office, whatever. What's your grade? Do they respond to your marketing? So when you send an email, you do a Facebook post, you send a postcard, your catalogs, what would you say your response rate is? So no one's going to be 100%, but would you say you're averaging at least a two to five percent response? I think that's the standard if you're doing good. So if you send a hundred coupons, are you getting at least two to five people coming to an event? That's kind of the base camp I found. So if you're getting that, I would say you're probably at a nine or 10. If you're not getting that or not doing that, well then your number might be a little low. Do they shop more than one lifetime order with you? So when you sell someone Cutco, how many times are they reordering? You know, my goal is to sell them at least two to three times a year at the show when I'm doing a summer sale or a price increase sale and then a you know, year-end push to hit the goal. And at least are they coming back next year to the event or are you sharpening their knives in a year or two? And then do they refer or recommend people to you? So add up your total out of 50 and then times it by two. Is this kind of simple? Did I make this simple enough for you to follow along? So now um, let's see where people are at. Do we, um, let's have everybody stand and we'll see, because um, we can use each other as tools. You know, I'm not the only person that knows how to market it. A lot of you are talented at this. So humble yourself. So if you're, uh, let's say if you're an F for hire, so everybody stand on up. We won't, we won't laugh at you if you sit down. So uh, if, if you're in the D status, or above, you can keep standing. So don't laugh, don't make fun of these people. Just encourage them to, uh, to turn in their marketing and uh, go get some, what's it called, tutoring at school when you go get your, your grades up? All right, so if you're a, a C or higher, keep standing. A B or higher. And then if you would say you're an A or higher. Actually, so if you're, a, if you're an A, keep standing. So. You have a few people here. How about a B? Let's say if you're a B, keep standing. If you're a B or an A. So these are people, if you recognize them by face, reach out to them and say, hey, how did you grow your marketing the last two, three years? Because 
they're obviously doing things right. And if you're a C, D, or an F, you got a lot of room to grow. So if you're selling an okay amount, imagine how much more you could sell. Cool, let's give these A's and B's a round of applause. All right, Josh, you gonna give me time? So what do we have, about 20 minutes here? All right, so I wanted to really make this more of a checklist and then feel free to circle or um, reach out with any questions or if we have time. So why marketing works, Toma. Does anyone know what that means? Top of mind awareness. Of mind awareness. A lot of times I talk to people in the hall and go, hey, I wanna do this postcard. And I tell them, hey, the postcard's gonna be great, but you can't, you can't plan on getting this, this huge response if you're just starting. The postcard is maybe you'll get one or two orders, one or two responses, but you're getting your info back in front of them. And then you send the email, you send another postcard, you maybe send a, uh, a holiday last chance thing, and then they're calling you for Christmas gifts. So you can't look at marketing as it's like, hey, I'm gonna do this one thing and rock it out. It's a continuous thing to create top of mind awareness. It grabs their attention, it gives them a reason to call or see you. And a lot of my emails for shows, it's just like, hey, come by and say hi. Come by and see pictures of baby Lincoln. A lot of times I think we put too much pressure on customers where it's like, man, Mike's, Mike's always trying to sell them something. And I don't want that image. And I try not to create that image. So when there is a special or there's a deal, they're going to want to come see or they're going to respond to it. So ask yourself, are you the person that's always just throwing up all these sales and promotions at them, or are you actually giving them almost an out to say hi and not feel obligated to buy, right? Or if you're at the booth and you can recognize the customer by face and they do one of these and they don't even say hi, has anyone ever been there before? Yeah. And you're like, I know you, you bought from me last year, right? You want those people to feel comfortable just to come say hi. And I always lead and be like, hey, good to see you. Hey, don't worry, I'm sure you're well equipped, but hey, if you need something, I'm doing some crazy deals, but hey, things are going good. Or they'll ask like, hey, how's Lincoln or how's the family? So um, that that's, uh, gives them a reason to come see you. Creates awareness, offers free stuff. Do people like free stuff? Yeah. yeah. Offer savings, discounts, updates them on your life. If you're not sharing anything that's important in your life, I know Josh is sharing Amy's book. You know, Fonz, you know, just won the silver cup for being, um, you know, someone who just came out and just worked his butt off last year, but his passion is um, theater and film and, and being an actor. So he shares that with people. You know, what is your family's passion? What was Danny saying to me last night at dinner? I'm using the, uh, what were you saying, Danny? I'm using my son as a, as a leverage tool. Hey, I'm proud of that. So what, you know, what is your leverage tool to keep people excited to know about you? Um, or trips, you know, people love traveling, especially people that buy Cutco. Those people go on vacation so they could uh, get along with that. Where am I at? What am I missing here? Provides, uh, provides company info provides contact info, invites them to an event. By the way, by you promoting marketing through Cutco, it gives your customers a chance to go out and check out the auto show, the RV show. They might not buy Cutco that time, but hey, around Christmas, you're doing a good deal. They think of, you know, their daughter wants Cutco steak knives, they're gonna call you, but they had a fun time at the auto show. Maybe they didn't buy, um, but you helped them know that, hey, that event was going on. Something for them to save or file shows your professionalism, shows that you're their rep for life, builds credibility, develops loyal clients and followers. You know, when you promote yourself and you use these tools, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get people that are literally loyal to you, right? You hear Josh talk about it. They go to different states and they bring up your name. That should be everybody's goal. If a customer moves, like they want to be loyal to you. Um, to, to get through everything, we're not going to tell any stories, but you can create your own stories and share it with, uh, with people that uh, you want to get fired up about marketing. Do you guys know marketing's a tax write-off? Do you guys forget about that? And you guys make the excuse you don't have the money to do that. Do you guys know it's a 99.9% .9 profit generator? I saw Josh, Hans, and I think Curtis. Have you guys ever lost money doing some form of marketing? Josh, have you ever lost money doing marketing? So it's not 100% proven, but the odds are stacked in your favor. You're going to at least break even or generate some profit. Do you guys know what percent of income you get paid? 50%. So you're, a lot of you are like, I want to, where do I invest my money? 
and you're looking at these 5% stocks and mutual funds, go back into Cutco, that's a 50%, you know, gross rate of return, right? <laughs> People remember what you do versus what you say. And then clients feel special and exclusive. Does that uh, help? Do you guys now see there's value to marketing there? All right, so what marketing works? And you're gonna hear from some uh, rock stars here. Um, here's some of the kind of types of specials I do. Um, doesn't mean it's right or wrong, it just, it's kind of what gets me excited. It's where my passion's at, is creating good pieces of, uh, of call to action. So postcards, direct for special events. So if I'm gonna do an auto show, I want them to know, hey, this is an auto show coupon, or this is an RV show coupon, this is a home show coupon. And it gets them to know, hey, go see Mike at this type of event. Um, you know, price increase. Like you guys know, it's pretty religious now. Every August, there's a price increase. So for me, I always plan a mega month in August because I tie in price increase. I have five weeks. I got my state fairs. That's a great call to action. New products. Like if you're not getting so excited about these mats and garden tools, like that's just another touch point to get people to shop. Seasonal. You know, for spring, you could roll out, you know, holidays and Valentine's. Um, but you know, you got Christmas is the greatest time ever to amp up your marketing. Milestones and anniversaries. So for me, like anytime I hit a milestone year, 10 years, if you guys are approaching like even a two year or one year anniversary or a promotion, Hall of Fame, Court of Honor, uh, uh, Silver Cup, you have to use that to get people to tie into the vision and the plan. And then I, once a year, I just do a service type of marketing piece where it's like, hey, this is how you get your broken tips fixed, service calls, go to the store if you have a store, or hey, call me for, you know, let's set up a summer appointment. So is that, is that helpful to see? Like, it's not just one postcard that does everything. You can literally tailor it to any event. Coupons for what I found works is usually like percentages off, 10 to 35. Um, so these are just some different coupons here that I've used for fairs and the malls and um, and then loss leader, you know, a lot of you are starting to do this where you buy like a peeler or an item and you say, hey, take a picture of your knives, come see me at the show, and if you do this, I always say now it's like, hey, you have to test drive three new items, there's no purchase necessary, but you'll qualify for this. A loss leader is like where grocery stores sell tomatoes at a loss, so they get you in the grocery store, so you buy other stuff. So the Cutco booth that I operate has loss leaders. I spend money on promotional stuff and I get them to come see me and guys it's only like one or two people ever take advantage of that but you know what they don't really feel good about taking advantage of it there's just nothing they need or want or maybe money's tight at the time but those people are going to remember that you gave them that free item and then when Christmas comes along or their kid gets married they're going to remember you and call you to order that set um, referral program you know offer hey a free gadget or fifty dollars cash to come see you at this show um, or hey, you spend 200 bucks, you get 50 bucks off. Um, so these are kind of just some of the backs of the postcards, like call to actions. Hey, come see us at the show, you get the, a free mystery knife. And that's pretty much just peelers uh, or paring knives, uh, trimmers, spatulas that we did for the mall that I had left over. It's like, hey, take a picture of your Cutco, show it to me in person, try out three new items, get a price quote. <laughs> you think I'm gonna be hardcore trying to sell them something there? Yeah. But I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna make them feel bad if they take the free item. Because what it costs me, seven bucks? Hey, I'll pay seven bucks to get someone who's qualified in my store because I'm that confident that I'm gonna at least sell them 100 to 200 bucks, right? Don't look at marketing as an investment loss. Look at it as an investment gain. You know, different calls to action, bring this coupon, save this coupon, you know, free engraving, free gift wrapping, is that helpful, cool? All right, so, and then you could do one like just list out show specials. Um, you know, sometimes it's like, if you make it simple, hey, one item's 10% off, two items 20% off, three or more is 30% off. Create your own specials, but that's kind of what I feel uh, has worked over the years. So emails, um, I don't have anything on emails up here, but uh, subject lines, that's the key. Like for me, it's like auto show coupon. That's a subject line. Because what are they going to think when they see that? Ooh, it's a free coupon to the auto show. But it's just a promotion to say, come see Cutco Mike, and then there's my Cutco coupon in the email, right? 
or it's um, come, come visit me in Iowa. So I'm not from Iowa, but I work in Iowa. So it's like, hey, here's the dates I'll be in Iowa. So your subject line should be simple, not super wordy, but you gotta think about it. Look at your emails in Gmail or whatever account you use. And when you look at it, what catches your interest? And it's a lot of times where it's your name that says something like Mike, comma, and it's like a, gener it's like a mass email, but you're like, ooh, they're talking to me. So try to make your subject lines where it's like, hey, are they gonna read it? Another thing I don't have in my notes, but always send yourself a test and look at it on your phone first, because you want it to be clear, because most people are checking their emails on their smartphones, and you don't want your images to be all distorted and your text to be distorted. It's like everybody's looking at their phone's email, and maybe at work a little bit. All right, so less is more event this weekend. So I'll just put the dates, my hours, and the coupon. Um, so email, so you could do different contests, raffles, surveys. Um, for me right now, I'm doing an NFL playoff uh, contest for four super shears, for if you pick your Super Bowl picks right. And I'm gonna you know, give you guys some of my nuggets. I'm gonna be doing the March Madness again. I'm gonna do a Kentucky Derby, like you pick a horse, I'm gonna have an item tied to each horse. I want people that are kinda like me to continue to buy from me, because that's what I like, sports and fun and excitement. And then like when we had the baby, we tied it into guess the gender. So, and then pumpkin carving contest. So create your own, but steal mine if you want, no big deal. Time sensitive emails, last chance. I know some of you guys tried that make me an offer, right? Did it work for most of you? Who tried the make me an offer? Any numbers that you sold from it that you remember? Three galleys, Three galleys. what else? 6,000 bucks. bucks. So what I do the last four years is the last 48 hours, it's like, Susie, comma, can I count on you? Or make me an offer, fourth annual, first annual. And it's literally like, hey, make me an offer, I can't guarantee I'll say yes, but I'm trying to hit this goal and I'm this far away. Use that every year. I can't, the last three out of four years, I've always hit my goal the last like hour promoting that. Um, important announcements, birth, anniversary, milestone, holidays. All right, sheet number four, we're gonna breeze through these. Um, business cards, you know, make it fun and professional. So like when you hand it to somebody, they go, wow, that's a cool picture of you. Or, Wow, and you know, invest in the baseball cards, the metal business cards, and have your company, your info, company info, if you have a store, and use it as a promotional tool. So like when I meet someone, I'll say, oh, and by the way, here's my card, I'm local, here's how you get in touch with me, here's our service center, here's my website. By the way, my website's full retail, that's why I'm here at the show today, because everything's 10 to 40% off. So I handle that objection in my sales pitch. Because what is most people gonna ask you? Can I have your card, can I have your brochure? So here's the thing some of you guys have been asking and talking about is these brochures. So the brochure is a tool to really just inflate your brand to be at a whole nother level than just a business card. And I use the brochures for multiple things, to promote your brand, your values, your story, your achievements, pictures of your family, put your show schedule on there, your contact info, your products that you have, um, receipt goes in it, company service. Because how many times someone says, how do I get my knives serviced? And you're like, go to cutco.com, or you try to write it out on a B-back pad. Now you have it all on a brochure. So it's like, hey, this is how you do it. So Matt was talking about service first, right? Someone comes up and says, hey, I'll get my knife sharpened. I go, oh, let me show you my brochure. Here, you know, here's a picture of my family. Ba 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 It's like, oh, by the way, do you want to check out our new stuff? I handled all that service stuff first. Now it's like they got my info, so they're like, okay, I feel I can trust this guy. And it's also good for B-backs, because if they walk around, they start reading this bio about you, they read all this stuff about Cutco, you maybe circle a free item, hey, come back, I'll give you this. So the brochures is like the next tool, the next wave of the, the B-back generation. Do I got three minutes or am I cut off? All right, I'm just gonna read off some bonus items. Um, cookies you could do to get people. I know some of you tried it, maybe it didn't work <laughs> as well. Um, fair food, like, uh, you know, different fairs have different food. Hey, you come by this much, I'm buying you the famous nachos or the famous corn dog. Mystery bags, mystery boxes. You're all wondering how to do it. Just make it different and unique and goofy and people are gonna wanna see you because everybody wants to be a part of something goofy and silly. Um, I'm gonna be testing a Cutco hat soon, scrub daddies, mystery knife, mini trimmers, come see baby pictures, come you know, check out the new mats, um, 
you know, come get Barkeeper's Friend, Flitz, Peeler for a, you know, free Peeler. So there's multiple tools you can use. So pick one and start it, start somewhere. So social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, promote you, promote your events, promote using Cutco, promote new customers, promote sales and specials. Here's what you wanna do. Whether you believe in Facebook or not, this is gonna help your business. Mrs. Jones, do you have Facebook? Or I always start off, do you have a smartphone? Yeah, do you have Facebook? Hey, could you just log on real fast? Hey, type in Cutco Mike, okay? So I put Cutco Mike as somewhere in my about me, so it pops up. It's not my name, you can look, it's not my name anymore, but it's in my about me, so it pops up. So whatever, tell me your name and then say, hey, like this, add me. Now if they buy, you say, hey, do you mind taking a picture? Hey, I'm gonna post it, get you some shout outs, get you some likes. Now you tag them. Guess who also sees that photo? All their friends that you would have never met. Now you have them, so all year long they see your specials, your updates. So when you're at an event, promoting something. So start it. I mean, it's free. Um, that's all you have to do. Hey, do you have a smartphone? You do Facebook? Hey, add me, I love to stay in touch with my customers that way. All right, I know I'm gonna be kicked off the stage here, but let's just read through this. Why? How marketing works, it only works um, when you work it. Oh, my boy Fonz. Fonz, what's up, bro? Fonz is a stud at marketing, so he created this brochure on just a sheet of paper. And, uh, you know, find Fonz and ask him if he can send you the file. But this is what he did to, use, to win the silver cup, but he had all his about me, his family stuff, his goals, and he had a show coupon on the back. So if you don't want to invest in the brochures, make something on Word document. All right, it only works when you work it. Thanks, Fonz, for being a team player. Uh, there's no such thing as too much marketing. You have to spend money to make money. Invest into approved vendors. So here's the thing. Some of you guys know I'm doing the Dow and marketing thing. There's, there's a Lowe's and Home Depot out there. Josh and Amy and then Chuck. That's the Lowe's and Home Depot. That's your, your shop to do the full home renovation cutco projects. If you like what I have and you're excited to learn a little bit of what I have to offer, I'm like the Ace Hardware. You need a tool, something <laughs> simple. Give me a, give me a jingle, Dowd Marketing at Gmail. I'll give you a little price. You might have to pay a little bit more for that wrench, you know, but you support the local, local man. <laughs> but you know those, you know those cats, they got their stuff together, you know, you, you know how big Lowe's and Home Depot are. I'm just a little ace hardware. All right, so, oh, there you go, there you go. So, and then you got Cutco. I use the rep portal all the time to send my emails. That's how I send my emails for my events. I just keep updating and changing out the list. Their pictures are clean, they're precise, and there's so many tools out there. Um, read marketing books, get mentored by an A or B. Plan out your marketing advance, timely promotion. I always send an email like the Monday or Tuesday before the event, Wednesday um, is the latest, because I want them to be able to plan their weekend schedule to come see me. Uh, postcards and coupons usually will hit their house the Friday, the week before, or the Monday or Tuesday, the week of the show. And then social media, I'm promoting it the week of, and then if I'm making sales, it's like, hey, come see me. And just remember, uh, don't be a dull rep in a sharp business. There you go, congratulations. <laughs>